Sobolski. Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics uh, here at Dutch Comic Con in Utrecht for the first time. Let, let, let me start by the thing that I'm most interested in is uh, uh, Editor-in-chief, what, what does that mean? It has different meanings for different people and even for me at different times of the day or times of the month or times of the year. Um, you know, basically it means I'm in charge of all of the Marvel's global publishing. So from, you know, coming up with new stories and new characters and putting out the monthly Marvel comics. Uh, we do about, you know, 80 to 90 a month of That's just the single comics. Um, I don't have much to do with the collections or trade paperbacks, but do have input when there's new material. Uh, and then, you know, working with our international partners uh, to, you know, create new comics, be it in Japan or in Italy or in South America with Marvel characters. But then, you know, the digital comics, uh, being in coordination with the other Marvel divisions like games, studios, animation, consumer products. So they have all the current information that they need um, from publishing and kind of just drive the business forward as the heart of Marvel that pumps the blood into the rest of the system. Sounds like a busy job? It's a very busy job, 24-7, like okay. I say. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, where, where, where are you located? When New York City. New York City, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you have to travel a lot for your work? Yeah, I, uh, I used to travel you know, once or twice a month at least. Uh, to places in the United States or Europe or Asia just for the job and yeah. it's uh, I enjoy it that's uh, one of the benefits okay. so where, where did the whole love for comics start with you uh, when I was a kid you know uh, X-Men I fell in love with the X-Men when I was a child and that was just a, a passion that started on that day when I was six and never stopped I find it interesting because every time I um, interview people that are in comics, they usually say that it started when they were a child. But um, one of the things that I know from uh, the comic world in the Netherlands is that a lot of people, the majority of the people, think that comics are for kids. Yep. So when they grow up, they don't read them, they don't care for them much. But I have a feeling in America it's a lot different. No, there's still the, the perception that comics are for kids. And there used to be, especially 20 years ago. Uh, but you know, recently it's changed thanks to the films having such a major impact on popular culture, and a lot of people realizing, though, comics comics are cool because this is where it all started. And you know, a lot of people who leave the theaters and go to bookstores or comic shops and try to get the original material. Yes, there's still that stigma in places, um, yeah. but you know, it, it used to be driven a lot by you know, uh, by parents or by media. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you know, people realize, you know, just how viable comics is as a form of entertainment, as a form of literature, uh, as a form of, you know, just storytelling. And that also, you know, not just with comics, but with games and animation and films, parents see now that, uh, you know, these are val career options that are uh, just as lucrative and can, you can be just as successful. So rather than pushing you know, your kid to be a doctor or a banker or uh, a lawyer, you know, now there's a lot more leniency that I've been seeing when the kids say they want to be video game designers or comic book artists or film directors. Yeah. So. The films really help the comics. Very much so, yeah, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's very good. Uh, I understood that you've also been uh, not just editor, but also a comic writer? Writer, editor, talent manager, head of Marvel <laughs> China. You know, I've done uh, a, a lot of different things in, in, in comics over the, when did I start? I started in comics in 96, so, you know, 27 years. It's just, you know, I, I love comics and I wanted to get in in any way I could. And, you know, just, uh, you know, just being in this business, I still pinch myself every day when I get up. And, <laughs> yeah, I get to make comic books for a living. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine. Um, here at Dutch Comic Con, the Stormbreakers are presented. The Stormbreakers are all here. Here they are, there, right there, yep. yeah, the Stormbreakers. Yep. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about why this was, this initiative was done? Uh, you know, this initiative started about 20 years ago when, uh, you know, myself, I was talent manager at that point, Joe Casada, particularly who's an artist and was editor-in-chief at Marvel, really felt we wanted to start spotlighting our talent in a way that hadn't been done before, you know? Uh, there's a lot of noise in entertainment with the internet and games and you know we felt that some of the artists that we thought were the, the most talented weren't getting the um, the attention they deserved outside of comics and even inside of Marvel. So uh, we created originally what was called the Young Guns program where we would select artists every few years who we thought were the top artists that are working at Marvel, some of the mostly newer artists that we felt needed a spotlight. And we would internally spotlight them 
make sure they're on the proper books and help grow their careers. Yeah. And uh, after you know five or six classes of young guns, we switched the name to Stormbreakers and gave a much more concerted effort uh, to the program, uh, making sure that uh, up and coming talent was identified globally, that they were um, given contracts, given specific assignments, and then put on all the new launches. So these eight Stormbreakers, seven who are here, because Nick Klein unfortunately couldn't make it, uh, are the, the up and coming artists, they're the next generation. They're people who have worked their way up to a point and now we've identified them and we're taking them to the next level. Yeah. Um, so they're all on big launches of books, be it Chris Allen on Black Panther or CFV on Avengers, Martin Piccolo on Thor, um, and they're all proving themselves very worthy of that title because they far exceeded our expectations in the short amount of time that they've been Stormbreakers. How, how, how do they qualify to be in a part of the Stormbreakers? There's a very selective, difficult process between myself, the editorial team, our talent management team, about how we go about selecting the Stormbreakers. Okay. It's a secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a challenge? It is. Yeah. Narrowing it down is the challenge. There's so much amazing talent in the world, so many great artists from all over, that um, you know, finding, finding, finding the talent isn't difficult. Narrowing it down to just eight, uh, the top eight, is, is really difficult. Yeah, yeah, okay, I can imagine that. Is this the first time you're here on a Comic Con with the, the whole boat? Well, yeah, all, the one then? yeah, all the the, all, uh, the plan was to get everybody here. Unfortunately, Nick Klein had to cancel, but um, it's the first time this amount, even with the seven, it's the first time that amount of Stormbreakers has right. ever been in, in one place. I think there were maybe three at one other convention before, three or four, but n never almost the the full lineup. So yeah. this is this is very rare, and I don't know if it'll happen again. You know, the the people here at Heroes Dutch Comic Con. Um, we're very accommodating and trying to make this happen, and we're very thankful to them and proud of everything we've accomplished here at the show. Okay, so this is kind of a really unique. This is thing. this is a one of a kind experience, and for people who came to meet them, who got the poster, who have been at the art auction, it's it's quite special. Yeah. Okay, I can imagine that. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's nice that we have this here at Heroes Dutch Comic Con. Yeah, Club. yeah. <laughs> so it's been all very right. good. Thank you for all the fans, you know, here in in, in Holland. We couldn't be more thankful for the energy, not here at the crowd and here at the show, but people who tell us about all the different comic shops who are supporting Marvel and the fans around the country. So, you know, we really appreciate all the support you give Marvel in all in all ways in all forms, from our, our comics to our films to the video games to so many of the toys that people have been carrying around, the cosplay. Uh, so thank you for your passion. Thank, thank you very you much, Marcel. Nice. Yep. It was nice to have a chat with you. Nice to talk to you too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, maybe I'll first introduce myself. Sure. <laughs> My name is Marcel. Marcel CB. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, um, in, I'll say it in Dutch, and I'm the strip vlogger, which roughly means comic vlogger. Okay. So I have a YouTube channel which is about uh, comics. Okay. It's usually European comics. Uh, and for well, a couple of years already, I do pretty much every edition of Dutch Comic Con. I'm here doing a report and doing interviews. Great. Okay. Also with uh, uh, Elena, I spoke uh, last edition. All right, nice. Yeah, we, November she was here. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually did a, a nice challenge with her, um, a blindfold challenge. So I asked her to put a blindfold on and then draw her character, the Black Widow. So, nice. Which was fun. Uh, so that, that's... How did she do? Um, not too bad. I mean, it's very difficult, of course. Oh yeah. But uh, you could actually see, you know, that it was a woman. So okay. uh, that's 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 quite impressive. It's nice to see when they're blindfolded how they exactly go about to yep. do it. So it's very interesting. Uh,
Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs>